five o'clock, I see that we have a quorum. So welcome to you all. Uh, particularly in chambers, uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I will note that we have um, uh, Amy Wilson as a guest uh, from Visit Sheboygan. Um, Daniela is on the phone. Um, Todd, uh, who else is in the chambers? Can you let us know? Sure. Um, we have Tara Dewey, Chad, uh, Carrie Aarons, uh, Mayor Mike, and myself, and a gentleman from WSCS. All right, very good. Um, uh, our first uh, piece of business is approval of the minutes of our December 14th meeting. Will someone so move? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. Um, let's move on to 3.1, which is a resolution authorizing city officials to execute a First Amendment to the agreement between the city of Sheboygan, visit Sheboygan and the Sheboygan area room tax commission regarding reimbursement of expenditures made by the city related to the blue harbor resort and conference center so i am thinking um that it might make the most sense at this point if uh todd uh, todd uh chad if you would just give us some background on the agreement and amy feel free to ch chime in anytime and i'm sorry my connection is not super good I can hear everyone just fine, but the picture's not real hot. So um, just let, if I really freeze up, just let me know. All right, Chad, take it away. Thank you, Chair. So earlier this morning, I shared an email from uh, Amy Wilson that, that came in over the weekend from Alderman Bourne's questions on where we are with room tax uh, closing up 2020 and where we're projected to be in 2021. Um, I'll let Amy talk about her response to that and then what other things Visit Sheboygan is working on as, as it relates to 2021. But in essence, this is an agreement that was executed back in 2019 that uh, required the Visit Sheboygan to reimburse the city for uh, expenditures made at the time when we had debt on the Blue Harbor Resort and Conference Center. Um, in the years that Blue Harbor did not make enough room tax payments to cover the debt payment, the general fund subsidized the payments um, and that money was calculated out to be, I want to say, right around $800,000. And those, uh, the plan was that Visit Sheboygan would make yearly payments in a range of 100,000 to 125,000 uh, over the course of the next eight years to repay those uh, room tax expenditures. Given that we're in the COVID and the room tax uh, dollars have been substantially less in 2020 and projected to be similar in 2021, Visit Sheboygan has made the request to the city to postpone those two uh, payments and then to push them out at the end of the payment cycle uh, once they uh, we can get through 2021 um, and hopefully travel picks back up again and, and room tax rates increase. So at this point, I think it might be uh, good to turn the floor over to Amy Wilson at Visit Sheboygan to talk about what she's planned for their budget in 2021 and what her projections on room tax collections looks like. Um, before we do that, Chad, does anyone have any questions about the underlying agreement itself? I do. This is Bert. Um, Go ahead. That the room tax payment was a flat 100000 a year. Did it include interest at all? I um, the room tax payment is... Go ahead, Chad. 
the, this contract did not include interest because it was in essence repaying back something that really Visit Sheboygan didn't have any control over at the time. So um, the plan under the original agreement that the council approved was to just pay back roughly the 100, 125,000 per year without interest to just make the city whole on uh, advances, advances as it related, but it did not include interest. Madam Chair, Thank Mayor you. Vandersteen, I'd like to make a comment. Sure, go ahead. Please, thank you. Um, I think you have to go back to 2018. There was a, a new bill passed at the state legislature, and it changed the playing field with relation to the um, uh, room tax being paid back to the city. So originally, um, the room tax um, was paying off that debt, but it didn't cover it all in all the years. And the city had always planned to continue to take the room tax in and uh, until all the money was paid back to the general fund. But that state law changed the playing field so that could no longer be done. And this uh, agreement was put together to make the city whole and, and pay everything back to the general fund at that time. So we just have to realize that uh, that things change once the state uh, changed the laws as, as it relates to how we can use the uh, room tax. All right, very good. Any questions for the mayor or Chad? If not, I'm gonna turn it over to you, uh, Amy. The, the floor is yours. Thanks for coming in. Okay, thank you. Or at least, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Digitally. <laughs> Um, as you probably are aware, it's been a pretty challenging year for everyone. Um, I don't quite remember how many years our agreement is for, but we did make the $100,000 payment at the end of 2019. Um, once COVID hit, of course, we didn't see the shutdown coming at the end of 2019. Um, and that really wiped out our quarter two room taxes um, for 2020. Um, so. If you look at, I'm sure you all have the figures that I sent. Uh, in 2019, our budget was just over 1.2 million. Um, in 2020, it dropped by about 400,000 um, in losses. Not as bad as we projected it to drop though, simply because even through the pandemic, outdoor recreation got a huge boost. Um, so we did actually do well during the warmer months, June through September occupancy was up sometimes near 80% um, as people were doing outdoor hiking, um, supping, surfing, sailing, boating. So that really helped us. Uh, in the winter, this winter, we don't expect occupancy to be much more around 50 to 60%, uh, maybe at times a little lower. And that's simply because it's the winter month, it's flu season, we're still in pandemic. However, as the vaccines roll out more, we do expect occupancy to go up and at least be up again in the summer um, and in the fall. By the end of next year, we're hopefully turn, looking at going back to some normal levels um, at, towards the end of 2021. Um, so for 2021, our room tax projection um, for the budget for tourism is about 984000 which is about 70% of the projected collections. That's still about 266,000 down from what it would have been in 2019. Um, we're asking to move the payment for 2020 and 2021. Um, in 2020, we really, what happened when we shut down the pandemic is, or, or when the pandemic shut us down is we called um, our contractual ob obligations and marketing and advertising. And we asked them to push them out, knowing that starting them in spring, we normally start in March, maybe February, nothing was gonna happen. So we had them pushed way out towards summer. Actually, we started a few of them back up in late spring. So normal contractual obligations that would have been done by the end of the year and possibly renewed, depending on the marketing strategy for the next year, actually ran us into next year's obligations because we still have to honor those contracts. Um, which is both good for us because at least it keeps our marketing robust as we come out of the lockdown and come out of the pandemic. Uh, so know that we're still paying those. So we did ask 
for 2020 to be postponed. We asked for 2021 also to be postponed, not knowing how the vaccine was gonna go and what we're coming into. We're starting to feel better about it now as we're starting to see how that's taking hold in the distribution. We would still like to request the two year postponement, although in the pro forma budget that we have for 2021, we did budget to make that room tax payment to make the 100,000. So we're only asking them postponement in case there's something we can't foresee that's be out of our control with the pandemic situation. Um, we're starting to feel actually pretty good about that. Um, but I also want to give you an update too, as you know, the visitor center was open maybe a month before the shutdown. So then we had to shut it down um, and it wasn't open to the public because we were still setting up the inside. The structure was done, but the inside was just a blank slate. Um, last year out of our budget, that also took about 78,000 just in the furnishings and setup and the interior design took about another 70,000 just in normal setup, um, new computer equipment, new phone system, mostly some IT setting up the gift shop and um, getting some of that rolling. So that hit our budget pretty hard as well last year. Um, the only huge item we're looking at coming into this year is still gonna be about another 35 grand um, to put up a huge monument sign outside in front of the building. Um, but we're also already started we're continuing, like I said, some of the marketing that we had to postpone that we can no longer postpone um, from 2020. But about 41% of our budget this year will go towards all of our marketing. That's billboards, print advertising, television advertising in some markets. Um, and then we are doing throughout the Midwest, we did a, um, a contract with a local family owned um, trucking company and we're wrapping a semi trailers. Um, which it turns out to be a better long-term investment for us covering more territory than some of the stationary billboards that we used to do. Um, and we're already getting a lot of feedback with some of those on the road. Um, so basically what we're pushing for the next year is trying to ride this outdoor recreational wave coming into spring and going all the way to fall. And the reason for that is while we're starting to see some meetings rebook and some conferences, group business rebook, it's not till way out in the year in 2020. We're not really seeing much of that at all through winter and spring. On the upside, <laughs> our hotels are already sold out going into June, July, and all the way through Ryder Cup. So hopefully the economy starts to stable. There's a lot of pent up consumer frustration out there and outdoor recreation has boosted. We're looking mostly to be flat in 2021, but again, that third quarter and the month on each side of it should give us a big boost to start looking back at a normal cycle as we go into 2022. Um, so that is pretty much the year in review for us in the short version. <laughs> All right, questions for Amy. I've got a couple of questions. Uh, Amy, uh, comparing 2019 to 2020, what was our, like, the area of REPAR? I'm sorry, what was the area was? REPAR, Revenue for Available Room. The, well, actually, the hotels don't report that to us. And room tax can't tell you that because the room rates fluctuate. Um, all, most of our hotels are privately owned under private owners or LLCs and they are not required by law to give us that information. Um, we're also not required, or actually what the state statute prohibits us from reporting any single hotel number. But average daily rate, I can tell you, did drop pretty much at, in the midst of the pandemic, it dropped about 40%. Some of our hotels actually shut down even longer because it was, less expensive for them to stay closed after lockdown for a longer time than to reopen. Okay. Um, I, I, I think I've, that's opened up a, a can of worms that I don't know if I'm prepared to talk with you about today. Uh, so let's uh, switch gears here to the budget itself. Uh, what are the largest expenditures you've got going on in uh, Visit Sheboygan for uh, 2021 and beyond? The largest expenditures are all in our marketing and advertising buys, all of it. 
it's probably about, like I said, it's about 41% of our budget. Um, we're looking at spending over 360000 in marketing and advertising. And so what kind of... Up a little bit, but right now, um, the new expenditures are about 360. We still have obligations from last year we're fulfilling all. So do you have $100,000 worth of discretionary funds that you could cut out of your budget? Um, we actually could do less marketing and advertising. Most of the rest of it is fixed costs on our building. And okay. with the, um, the uh, Sheboygan, or Visit Sheboygan Board of Directors, we've gone through the budget. We just did this a couple weeks ago and looked at, like, do we really cut the marketing when the hoteliers are really putting pressure on us to get the advertising back out there so they can start recovering occupancy? I, thank you. I guess let's open up one more question if you would uh, entertain me for one more, Ms. <laughs> Madam Chair. Um, uh, so what what do you find is the ROI on the Visit Sheboygan um, advertising? How is that tracked? And and um, explain that to me. Like, So for every dollar spent, how much is coming back to the community? And how do you measure that by marketing? Well, actually, every, every um, avenue of advertising that we do is tracked separately. So a lot of it's tracked through the website and social media because we direct a lot of it right back there because it's easy, easily trackable. Um, the return on investment depends. Our room tax is 8%. So a lot of this is out of our control because a lot of it doesn't just go to hotel rooms. It's day trips as well. The average overnight, the average overnight expenditure is about $168 per person. And that's, whether, or that's basically at 2.3% people per occupancy per room. The average day tripper is worth about $58 per person. So could, could you do that simpler math for me? Um, I, I guess, so if we spend $1 uh, on marketing, or if, if Visit Sheboygan spends $1 on marketing, how much comes back to Visit Sheboygan to continue to spend on marketing? Well, I, yeah, I could give you an average. If we spend one dollar on marketing, we're probably looking at anywhere in depends, twenty dollars to fifty dollars per person. It just depends on the time of year. The rates fluctuate so much. You take something like PGA, that's peak season, and the rates are way up compared. They're at basically Chicago levels. An average time of year, our average room rate's probably around eighty-nine dollars. I, I follow you, Amy. Uh, I, I spent better part of a decade running a hotel. Uh, so that's why I'm, I'm so pointed with my questions today. I guess um, oh, I'm fine. trying to really understand here so that uh, if Visit Sheboygan spends $1 on, let's say, a campaign X, uh, the highest campaign return that you've seen is what ROI? Well, the thing is, we can only count it based on room occupancy. So it, I would say it's 20 to $50 per person um, based on their travel expenditures. However, the recreational expenditures in the hospitality industry, as you know, are spread out between so many other industries. Even the State Department of Tourism doesn't track these necessarily through all of the restaurants, the spending on recreation, the spending on shopping, those divided and spending on gas stations, spending on food markets, those divided through the tourism industry from regular local buys are somewhat difficult to um, bring that or find the ratio for. So we do rely on the Wisconsin State Department of Tourism because they spend tens of thousands of dollars on marketing research that we use to tell us where to put our marketing dollars. And actually right now, because we jumped on, we started jumping on the recreational market because we saw this coming like three years ago, not with the pandemic, um, but the, uh, um, the United States um, Outdoor Recreation Survey that's done every year, and I cannot wish I could remember the organization that does it, but the State Department of Tourism passes <coughs> those surveys on to us. And Wisconsin is number three in outdoor recreation in the United States, actually followed only by California and Florida. So when we started that campaign, and then the State Department of Tourism saw that they knew it too, they didn't hit it quite as hard as we did, but now after COVID, they are. So we're kind of, they're following our lead, we're following theirs. And we're going with that um, area of activity for recovery. 
because we don't see the other markets coming back that fast. Marcus, any other questions? I need to contemplate for a moment. Feel free to move on to someone else. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I've got a question, question Amy. Uh, hypothetical question. What if we didn't make a decision on this today and we held this over till after the third quarter in 2021? <clears throat> you would probably have a better indication then of how things have gone in 2021, see if the Ryder Cup is still on, if that's going to come to fruition, and make a decision uh, right after the third quarter and see what your financial position is then and see whether you could make the full payment of if it's going to be $100,000 or if, you, if we're having a good year, whether you could make 75 or 50. Uh, would that bollix things up for you going into the year, knowing that we're going to revisit it at the end of the third quarter? Yes, actually, that would not be a terrible position to be in at all. Um, I would like to point out, though, that at the end of third quarter, there is a 60-day lag before we see any of the numbers. And the reason is, is because the Wisconsin state statute allows um, the hotels 30 days to remit their payment to the uh, room tax commission or to the municipalities, and the municipalities have another 30 days to reconcile that before it goes to the commission and then comes to us. So we're actually fourth in line of that pass-through, and that takes about 60, 70 days to happen. But you would, have a, you would have a pretty good indication by that time, though, how 2021 is going with the, with the vaccine and all of the various activities that we have here during the summer you would have some kind of an idea of what your year is going to turn out to look like, though. Well, we would have an idea only based on what the hotels tell us, which doesn't give us um, the, it doesn't give us the best room tax projection, but it's going to let us know what gives us the best room tax projection is the Tourism Commission telling us what the actual number is that the hotels report to through the municipality. Um, but we'll have some indication for sure and we'll definitely know if Ryder Cup's going to happen. <laughs> uh, Jim, I can point out, Jim, if, if I can just point out that one of the things we need to deal with today is the 2020 room tax or reimbursements uh, per the contract. Right. So um, the contract language itself, although it's a little fuzzy, it's not fuzzy, it's just not super precise, but provides for exactly what you're looking for. And um, I think if both Amy and Chad can note that toward the end of the year, um, we would appreciate a report, and, and Thomas, maybe you can even calendar that um, for 2021. But I think mm -hmm. we do need to act today, don't we, Thomas, on 2020? You wouldn't necessarily need to act. I mean, it could just sit out there with a, a payment that was due um, in two days that isn't made. I mean, that that, that can be done. Um, I would think from a, a Visit Sheboygan perspective, having this uh, sort of liability out there isn't, isn't great really for anyone. Um, it looks like the city's got some, uh, an unpaid, uh, unpaid invoice. Uh, Visit Sheboygan has an unpaid bill. Um, but as a, a legal matter, you could decide you're not going to going to enforce. Um, there are some interest penalties baked in um, if if payment isn't made timely. So you know if you if you wanted to, you could amend it. And I don't know if this would be agreeable to the other other signatories. I mean, you could amend it to just deal with the 2020 payment and to punt 2021 if you if you wanted to. Um, I think that part of the idea here is, you know, sort of deal with it holistically based on the, the best expectation at the time. And if the facts change, um, there's nothing that would prevent a second amendment to this agreement. Well, I'm comfortable, uh, and, and my level of comfort really relates to having um, a clear indication from the council that we are comfortable with waiving, or I shouldn't say waiving, postponing the 2020 payment. Um, I think that gives us some sense of, if not finality, at least certainty. Um, 
So my view is that we should do this, that, and built into the amendment is the ability for the city to review um, the waiver of the of the 2021 payment towards the end of 2021. And that seems sensible to me as well. Um, I don't know how all of you feel about that. I do think it is, I would certainly support the waiver of the 2020 payment. I think based on the figures that Amy provided us and our general knowledge about the, you know, the bottom falling out of the um, uh, room tax world, that that is a sensible and necessary uh, action on our part. Um, so uh, I, I'm just putting that out there and, you know, however we want to fashion the motion, I think um, uh, I'm going to need that clear postponement or, or clear uh, postponement of, of the 2020 payment. I'd like to I'd like to ask a question of the financial people from the city and perhaps uh, city administrator Wolf. I mean, this is a you know this is a hundred thousand dollars that's not going to be coming in in uh, in 2021, and we've already had an eight hundred thousand dollar hit on, on on from the general fund on this. This is going to be another hundred thousand dollars that should be coming in that apparently won't if we if we decide to waive it. Uh, for the time being and adding it on to the end. Uh, and I think uh, uh, 2022 is going to probably be a difficult budget year. We, we have a lot of uncertain, uh, uncertainties with the, with the city going forward through 2021. So I guess, uh, you know, if we do this, is this gonna mean that uh, for budgeting for 2022, we're just gonna have to take another $100,000 out of the general fund to, uh, to fund this and and then are we going to be looking at, uh, you know, more raises next year? Another 2% is a $500,000 hit on the, on the uh, you might as well say on the general fund because we probably can't levy for it. So, you know, what, are, what do our financial people feel about doing this? Well, they probably don't have to make that decision <laughs> if I could, because in 2021 on our budget right now, that payment is accounted for. Okay, well, I'm talking, first of all, I'm talking about the, the $100,000 for 2020. Okay. Well, Jim, I'm not sure. So, Jim Bourne, Alderman Bourne, your proposal then is not to postpone the 2020 payment. In other words, not, so you would vote against amending this agreement. Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm, what I would like to hear is from our financial people, uh, Tara or, uh, or, our, or Daniela, or perhaps uh, city Admin administrator Wolf is, you know, this would be a, this for 2020, this would be a, a, another hundred thousand dollars that would be going back into the general fund. That's not going to happen if we vote to forgive it and move it, move it to a later date. You know, uh, what repercussions is this going to have? I mean, I just hate to keep taking money out of the general fund and, uh, you know, for, for budget shortfalls or employee raises. So tell, the financial people tell me if they're comfortable with doing it. Jim, uh, Alder, Alder Bourne, this is uh, City Administrator Todd Wolf. Um, for 2020, the $100,000, although it, that is a large amount of money, um, I'm not as worried about 2020 as I am 2021 because with the numbers that we projected and cut back for 2021, 2021 is really going to be tight citywide. Um, I did not come prepared, so I apologize um, to see how that would affect us in the 2020 budget, but I have to make an assumption that knowing the numbers that we were looking at during the development of the 2021 budget, that 2020 doesn't concern me as much, but I will say $100,000 in the 2021 budget is going to be um, not a positive situation in any way, um, but 2022, as you had touched on, and I know I've, I've uh, pointed this out many times, the 2022 budget is going to be very, very difficult uh, to, to withstand a $100,000 uh, additional loss. So I guess the question is, 
where does it shift? If it's going to hit me in 2020, I think we're in better shape. If it's going to get pushed to 21, it'll probably help me. If I'm going to lose it in 22, it's, it's going to be very difficult. So I, I don't know if that assists you. Well, just so I understand, um, and I don't have the document right in front of me, but the, the proposal was to postpone the 2020 payment and potentially postpone the 2021 payment. That's it correct. Does not speak to, it does not speak to postponing the 2022 payment. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. And like I said, at the time, we couldn't see what was going to happen with the vaccine. But over this last month, we're feeling a lot better about 2021. <laughs> okay. Other comments, questions? Madam Chair, I've got, uh, I think, one comment uh, to make here. Um, back in 2016, I was on the opposite side of this argument, delivering for the w, um, w, WHNLA to uh, institute this uh, tax reform where the money was going to stay with the tourism entities. And now being on the city government side, uh, only a short time after uh, lobbying for that, um, I am, I am, I see the need for us to put that money into the general fund. And I wouldn't be in favor of postponing the 2021 payment, but uh, the 2020 payment being postponed, I think that makes a lot of sense. So I'd love to see an amendment. I don't even know how we word that, um, but, but I agree with you, uh, Madam Chair, that that's what the process should be. So you're saying, Marcus, that you're not interested in any flexibility in 2021? No matter what happens. I think they've budgeted for it and that money should be coming to the city. It, if it comes down to marketing dollars for tourism or policemen, we pick the policemen. Well, I think that's pretty reductionist and I think we need to be very careful about making those reductionist kinds of statements. It's, we're not choosing here between police officers and room tax. We are not choosing here between employee salaries, reasonable raises, and room tax money. I think we all need to just kind of take a deep breath and understand that this is a repayment of a <coughs> debt that Visit Sheboygan owes. And for a wide variety of reasons, we extended to the city or to Visit Sheboygan this repayment flexibility. So um, out of our you know, $130 million budget, um, $100,000 is very important, but I don't think we're, we're talking about, I mean, if, if Administrator Wolf says we are going to have to eliminate 20% of employee raises or we're going to have to lay off a police officer, um, we'll need to consider that. Um, but I think what we're looking for here is just some flexibility for a particular industry that was hit in a particularly difficult way and preserving some flexibility to make sure that it continues to work well for us and remembering we have two other partners in this enterprise. And then uh, also making sure that the money that, um, the money that is generated uh, from room tax is really exceptionally helpful to the city and without a whole lot of effort on our part. So, I mean, it's, it's a nice tax dollar. So I don't think we want to horse around with that, I guess is what I'm saying. I have a couple of questions, if you wouldn't mind. Go ahead. Um, Amy, do, do you submit quarterly payments on your room tax? Do we get quarterly payments, we the city? Oh, okay. Well. I'll explain it to you, but normally how room tax works is 100% is collected from the hotels of the room tax by the municipalities. The municipalities, according to state law, um, are keep 30 of that right off the top for their general fund. And 70% is passed on to the Tourism Commission, which is then passed on to us. Now, that's just normal collection. So the um, debt payment is scheduled to be made by the end of the year every year. So in 2019, it was made the end of December or at some time in December. Um, this is the year, excuse me, we're looking to postpone. Again, we have it budgeted 
as an annual lump sum payment at the end of 2021. So it's not done quarterly. Part of the reason for that is because quarter three is our best quarter. Um, there's about five months of the year where we literally earn 70% of our income. And quarter three is our best quarter. So when we receive those funds in December, that's normally when we would make the payment. Okay. Um, right now we're looking at all or nothing. Is there some reasonable in asking if, since there were no interest payments, I, I, I'm kind of flashing back to contractual arrangements that redevelopment has with a number of, of organizations and corporations. Well, interest only. Can can you provide us with twenty thousand, twenty five thousand for this calendar year? Um, and can we move it, move the rest out. We, I would have to go back to our board and look at our budget again to see what they'd want to cut because we'd have to make a cut. Um, but I'm not going to say that's impossible, but I'm not sure if everyone's aware of where this payment originates from to begin with. Um, when Blue Harbor was run by, a, was it Great Wolf? Um, they obviously weren't running it as a convention hotel. So the occupancy was not up as high as it is right now um, since it's been bought. However, there were a period, so many quarters under that management that Blue Harbor did not collect enough room tax to pay the city to make the payment on the bond that built the conference center. So 100% of Blue Harbor's room tax went to pay off those bonds until about 2018 and the bonds matured. That's when the, the room tax started funneling through the system like the other hotels, going to the municipality, 30% staying in the general fund, and the rest of it coming into our budget. Um, so really, 2019 was the very first year. We even saw a full year of the Blue Harbor room tax added to our budget. So I don't want to say no, Roberta, but we don't really know what their room tax is like under normal circumstances. Okay. We're playing with a lot of things here. Um, we can go back and look. I can call a meeting of our board of directors. Chad and the mayor are on that board. Um, they were in the meeting approving the budget so with the executive committee, so they do understand the situation that we're in. But if we're going to go that route, we're going to need to do it now because we're already signing contracts for next year to try to get the ball rolling, and we don't want to default on any of our advertising agreements either. I appreciate that. Other questions, comments? I think I'd like to uh, make an amendment to this agreement that it uh, would delay the 2020 payment and would not delay the 2021 payment, but we can look at it next later, later on in 2021 to see if it is indeed an issue that they cannot repay. Um, how about if we, uh, in the spirit of that motion, if we have a motion that provides that the um, payment due the city is uh, postponed uh, and not required to be made in 2020, and that uh, at a time toward the end of 2021, the matter will be brought back before the Finance Committee to review the possibility of a 2021 payment. That, that'll work. I, I like that. I would second uh, that. <laughs> all right. So we have a motion and a second. Is there I any other discussion on it? I have a question. Does that work for you? If, I'm sorry. If, is this, in effect, pushing the, the payment out for an extended year at the end of the contractual agreement? It seems to be, uh, from what I read, Thomas, is that the case? I mean, it adds years on to the agreement. Is that correct? The agreement, as it was originally um, drafted, had the last payment of that forty-nine thousand three ninety-nine made December thirtieth, twenty twenty-five. So, so this this would push it out two years. Essentially, that there's two years of no payment, and then everything just is added added to the end. I'm hearing one year of no payment. 
Yeah. So I, I, I'm I'm talking about the um, the amendment as it was included in your in your packet. Um, the the motion, as I understand it, from Alderperson Donahue, um, would keep the no payment for 2021 or for for 2020, excuse me. Um, and then is sort of a little bit ambiguous on 2021, in, intentionally ambiguous um, in terms of what would what would happen with that with that payment. Um, if I understand Alderperson Donahue's motion, it would give the authority, you know, remembering this is a three-party agreement, uh, it would give the authority to the city to determine whether the 2021 payment is made essentially in 2021 or in 2026. Well, actually, I, th I think what the motion does say, and I don't know who's taking minutes and could, could read it back, is that <laughs> the city agrees to review the 2021 payment um, at, at a time that is, it sounds like in December, Amy, would be the smartest way to determine whether the revenue um, expectations are, have come true or, you know, whether we have a new advanced strain of it, and, you know, whatever. Um, so the intention of my motion, at least, was to build in a review at the end of 2021 to determine to what extent from a full payment to a partial payment to no payment, depending on the circumstances. Um, so there is that built-in flexibility for both Visit Sheboygan and for the city. May, may I ask uh, So my question is, 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 did everyone understand the motion in that respect, or should I be... Um... May, may I ask a clarifying question? Sure. So right now it lists out all of the, the payments to be made with dates next to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the amendment did and, and the original contract did. Are you imagining an amendment that lists a 2021 payment of $100,000? No. no. Coupled with a statement that that will be revisited or no reference of the 2021 payment, um, essentially keeping the payment structure as it is in the amendment as, as drafted and inserting essentially a, a promise on the city's part to reevaluate whether whether making a payment is appropriate. Correct, because if, if at the end of December of 2021 it needs to be amended, the whole agreement will need to be amended. So but um, if, if, all this if, if, comment has filled in a specific review promise, a specific review agreement. So that at the end of 2021, this committee will be looking at this and Amy will be saying, hey, we had a great year, here's your 100,000. <laughs> or she'll say, we had a terrible year, here's 20,000, or somewhere in between. Madam Hi, Chair, may, may I ask I mean, a clarifying I, I just let me finish through with with Thomas. I don't think we need to fuss and dust over much about the payment schedule right at the end, because if in fact there is an if in fact there's a payment, that's going to have to be amended anyway. All we're doing is building the review process. Does that make sense? I, I think it does. I, I think I, I think I'm following. So essentially, that that review isn't necessarily. Uh, going into the contract, part of my thought is any change to the contract would require uh, both other signatories to approve it. I believe they've approved this amendment as as written. Amy, do I have that right? I'm sorry, to, as written? Uh, the, the change to the payment structure where there's no payment in 2020 and in 2021. Has, has that gone to, to visit Sheboygan or the room tax commission? Um, no, or that was for the room tax commission. It, it has not actually come to our board of directors. It has not gone to the 
room tax commission because the room tax commission had advised they wanted to see what the city would do first. Okay. Okay. So we, we can make changes and not, uh, not cause issues where things have to have to go back. Um, right. Okay. Madam chair. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I would, I would be, I would be comfortable leaving in the 2021 payment, but subject to review late, late in, late in 2021 and I am comfortable with you know foregoing the 20 the 2020 payment for right now I have a question for Thomas in the agreement here uh, it says that so long as reimbursement payments are made timely no interest shall be calculated on the reimbursement now does uh, according you said there was some interest payments built in there uh, by not doing the 2020 payment is that going to trigger interest no, so th there's a, a provision in uh, in section three of the original agreement that deals with late payments, uh, and it enforces a uh, late payment charge of five percent of the entire uh, unpaid amount of the installment. Um, so that would that would not accrue if we change this payment underlying payment structure where there is no 2020 payment. Okay, thank you. Thomas, I have a, I have a question. The, the amortization table, for lack of another way to say it, that amortization table, is that going to change or is that not going to change? So the, the amortization table is essentially um, the repayment of this $749,390. $749,399 shortfall. Um, and there, there was no, no interest uh, imposed initially. So the, the amortization table, such as it was, uh, was essentially a list of dates and payments. Um, and then it, it clarified that there was no prepayment bonus. So the, the only change would be what, what dates go with those payments. Madam okay. Chair. Okay, uh, Bert, were you finished? My, my screen is I, so bad. I'm, I can't I am, hear everyone. I just want to make sure. Um, I am still not. I am still not clear. I, if we say, okay, unusual circumstances, no payments for this year. Where do we keep track of? the $100,000 and where did it go? Does it move everything out another calendar year and should the document reflect that? Yes, it, it would do that and that's what the amendment is doing. It is taking the payment schedule, the amortization schedule um, from the original document and changing the payment date so that all of the dollars would still be repaid. It is just pushing it out and according to a portion of that original documentation, will the city collect the 5% on the unpaid balance for this calendar year? I would not interpret the, uh, the agreement as providing that because we are essentially making it so that the 2020 payment wasn't unpaid. Uh, we are, we are changing right. that so that there, there was no 2020 payment. Could we right. I mean, add, to do Go ahead. Could we add that in lieu of a hundred thousand dollar payment for twenty twenty, we will charge interest on the twenty twenty. It's like an interest only payment. We will charge that fee for this year and move all the rest of the payments out. I mean, we could do that, Bert. Um, my concern is is a couple fold. One is we're making this really complicated. Number two, although I was only on the edges of the negotiations, and Todd may have some input here, and 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 Mike, um, this was a really <laughs> this was a very difficult situation that came up because of the Blue Harbor issue, 
And this was essentially a compromise of interests that were involved. And, and the problem now is, we, and we need to remember, what we're talking about here is just the city's repayment. If we modify that agreement, we need, I believe, to go back to the Room Tax Commission and to our other partners to ensure that this is what goes on. I know this may seem like we're not being punitive enough, um, that we aren't, you know, that from a fiduciary point of view, we really should be holding Visit Sheboygan's feet to the fire, um, you know, doing it in a friendly way and saying, you know, you don't have to pay, you know, for 2020, but we're going to assess a 5%, um, you know, late payment on the entire amount. Um, I just think all we're trying to do here is to say reflecting the reality of the financial situation now, we're gonna put off the 2020 payment. We're not gonna give it up. We're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna augment it with interest. Um, and then toward the end of 2021, we're gonna ask Amy to come back and perhaps it will be such a nice year that Amy will say to us, hey, we can make the 100 grand payment. Don't worry about it. And then that, you know, that amortization or payoff agreement will change somewhat. Um, if she says it's a terrible year, you know, and then, you know, a year from now, this, this committee will be sitting around talking about what it should do. Uh, but this is with respect to what Visit Sheboygan owes the city. And, and we need to be careful about fussing and dusting with the room tax board or the, the, the room tax commission because other people have standing here if we're gonna start doing more drastic contractual alterations, I would say. So I think that the motion before us, it's pretty plain, it's pretty simple, it's flexible. Um, and I think overall, I mean, <laughs> we're just very happy that Visit Sheboygan is doing a good job of bringing people into the area and that we're making really a fair amount of money on this. This is happy news for us just from the room tax alone, much less all the other stuff. And so I think we wanna just be as sustaining as we can be, if, that, if all of that makes sense. I'm sorry, I kind of blathered on there, but um, my view is that the, that the proposal before us is the clearest and, and the easiest, and we can just move forward. But I'm, I'm happy to hear what other folks have to say. Madam Chair, uh, do you mind if I ask a clarifying question here on your amendment? It's not an amendment, it's just a motion. Or on it's the motion. a motion to amend the agreement. Yes, on, on that. Um, so yes, by all means, go ahead. I'm looking at paragraph two as the list of dates, starting with December 30th, 2019. Uh, are, would your amendment say December 30th, 2019, December 29th, 2021, then 22, 23, and so forth? Or would your your amendment or your motion state 2019 and then 2022? What it, what it would state is what the motion says. So, and what I'm gonna do, Marcus, is go to the particular language of the agreement. And Thomas, if you want to chime in at any time, if I can see, jump so, in and try to and answer this based on my my understanding of of the motion. So I think the the sort of two discussion points are whether the default position is a 2021 payment or no 2021 payment. As I understand Alderperson Donahue's motion, it would be a default position of no 2021 payment with a requirement to evaluate whether there should be a 2021 payment. It, well, at, at that point, then there's no teeth in this agreement. There's no obligation for them to come back and say, oh yeah, we'd love to pay you money. We don't really need to pay you. I'd, I'd love to see the 2021 date in there with the promise for the city to review it, uh, knowing full well that we want to be accommodating, but I don't want to give up the judiciary um, teeth that we would have in this agreement to say, hey, where's our money? I agree. I agree with Marcus on that. I would like I would also like to see the the December, whatever it is, 2021 date still in there. 
but with the idea that we are going to review it towards the end of 2021 to see what shape uh, the organization is in, whether they can afford to make the payment. But I agree with Marcus. I don't think the 2021 should be removed uh, or uh, left out. I think it should be in there on the schedule. Well, my things are agreeable. I withdraw my motion. And Marcus or Jim, uh, please propose your motion. Go ahead, Marcus. Um, so I would motion to uh, amend paragraph two of the dates. So they read December 2019, December 2021, December 2022, and so forth to keep the payments correct. With a an understanding that in December of 2021, uh, the matter will be reviewed to determine the ability of Visit Sheboygan to pay the $100,000. Exactly that. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I have a question. Do we need to then also say there is one more year tacked on to the end of this table? Thomas we'll, just, is, we'll rely on Thomas to, to make that change. Thomas is shaking his head. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll make that, that adjustment. Um, we're, not, we're not trying to collect $850,000, just the, the 749. Is acceptable language for the reevaluation? Uh, the parties agree to reevaluate in December 2021 whether the December 2021 payment is financially feasible. Is that is that agreeable? And that and then I would say and comma if not financially feasible comma the council or the city rather agrees to uh, enter into discussions with Visit Sheboygan to determine the the 2021 payment. I'm good with that. Does that make sense, Thomas? I just want to make sure that it's crystal clear that even if the 100000 is the default, there will be a discussion about this at the end of 2021 to ensure that we don't put Visit Sheboygan in such a financial position that it can't do the good work that it's doing in order to make us money and to make our city prosperous. So that's, that's my deal. And Thomas, Thomas, I'm taking for granted then that the uh, we're going to waive we're going to waive the 2020 payment, and you'll just add another year under this under this schedule that we have, and also we will have the re the revised the revised uh, uh, schedule in time for our council meeting to review with the rest of the council um, Monday night coming Monday if necessary. That will be the plan. All right. Good. I'll second. Right. Uh, Marcus, I'll second Marcus's motion. I don't know if there was a second or not. I don't think there was. I'll second it. All right. So that does everyone understand the motion before us? Okay. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor of the uh, motion, the state aye. 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 Uh, is. Uh, are there any opposed? Chair both sides, the motion passes. Very good. Thank you. Amy, thank you so much. We really appreciate all the work you do. Thank you. <laughs> all right, we'll move on to 3.2, which is a resolution to authorize transfer of appropriations in the 2021 budget. Who would like to take this for us? Marilyn. This is, this is Todd. Really, 3.2 is actually very, uh, a very simple situation. It's just a clerical error that the monies were documented in the wrong category, so we're just cleaning up uh, the budget by communicating to you where the money really needs to be. So it doesn't affect the final numbers. It just has to come out of these categories. Otherwise, we will have uh, an expenditure restraint situation. It was just a clerical situation. The monies were supposed to come out of the correct categories, but it was documented in, incorrectly. Thank you. Does anyone have questions for Todd? If not, I would be looking for a motion to uh, authorize the transfer of the appropriation. So moved. Second. Very good. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. And I believe, let me just get back to board docs. Well, that's it, folks. Our next meeting is January 11th. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So, second. All right. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye and wishes all of you a very happy new year. And stay out of trouble, Jim Borton. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Happy new year to a better year. <laughs> yeah, here's to a better year. Thank you all. Thank you.